Hi everyone, JR with Secure Metals. Bring another technical look at the precious metals sector. Today is the 14th day of August. It is Wednesday, 3.12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, market's doing phenomenal. Nice uh, short-term rally here. We have uh, still in a downtrend though, so we have to be very careful. And before I get to the analysis, you know, right now we're looking at this market and we're going to run into some resistance here roughly around 1350, currently trading at 1335, possibly find some resistance at around the 1380 area where this 100-day uh, moving average is. And I'll be doing the daily charts and the weekly charts for both gold and silver. I'll also um, take a quick look at the uh, Dow Jones as well as the dollar. And uh, before I get into that, so you look at this market here and you wonder why, all right, if you think that the, you're going to find resistance, why not take some profits here or why not, uh, um, let's say, short this market? Well, have to be very careful when you get out of a bull market. Now, yeah, on a short term here, we are on a, on a, on a bit of a downtrend, but at the end of the day, I think we can all tell by this beautiful um, chart here that this is still in a uh, very 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 strong bull trend and uh, you have to be very careful uh, exiting these uh, bull trends or, or exiting the trend you know the dollar is in a very very if you look at the dollar across the board let's look at the dollar versus the Australian dollar if I look at this chart here I can see that the Australian I remember this is it says AUD USD that's Australian dollar versus the US dollar so when the market is going down uh, it's bullish for the US dollar when the market is going up is bullish for the Aussie dollar that's why you have the second pair uh, the second uh, currency is always um, uh, the opposite so if I'm looking at the Aussie dollar over here we have a big bull trend we have some sideways consolidation we have a move to the downside here so you have a short-term bullish uh, trend here for the US dollar now if we look at the monthly chart here very easy to see here that the monthly chart it's in a very steep bull trend okay and um, you just have to respect these trends and you know this potentially can come down here all the way down to 79 or probably even test this 200 day moving average I don't think it'll go down that far uh, especially when I'm looking at a um, a very bullish divergence here great time to buy the Aussie dollar in my opinion um, great time to buy the Aussie dollar and take this thing back up to at least 98 from 91 where current levels are possibly even much much higher because again the dollar is in a bear trend and it has been for the last 10 years um, actually longer than that but my point is I'm going to read uh, a, a few pages actually about two pages of one of my favorite books of all time is called reminiscence of a stock operator now this book is based on a gentleman by the name of um, Jesse Livermore Jesse Livermore uh, quite possibly arguably the most successful trader in the history of the stock market and um, in these two pages he learned a very 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 good lesson and uh, I just wanted to share this lesson with you okay is by Edwin Le uh, Lefevre and this is by far one of the most popular books if you are an investor uh, if you are a trader and you haven't read this book shame on you uh, but also if you're an investor this kind of gives you a little bit of a of a of an idea of how of how you should be looking at this market so again by far the most important lesson uh, that you can possibly learn in this business in, in or whether you're trading stocks whatever you're trading one of the most important lessons that you can possibly learn is, is keeping a good eye on the full scope of the market and um, this is where Jesse Livermore learned his uh, most important lesson I think um, but uh, again I'll just read here so um, the first few lines might not make too much sense to you but basically what's happening um, he uh, this the kid goes in he gives the uh, mr partridge a, a a tip on to buy a stock and now he's telling the guy now he's telling mr partridge to take profits now uh the narrator here is telling you how mr partridge 
um, how he would talk to his clients, how he would talk to his customers, when his customers would tell him to either buy or sell. Um, so at any rate, here it is. The customers who were all eager to be shoved and forced. By the way, if you want to read the book, shoot me an email, give me a shout. Uh, if um, I'll have the link at the uh, bottom here if the link for whatever reason doesn't work just again shoot me a quick email or again give me a shout and I'll be more than glad to uh, forward you the book I have a few copies of that book anyway um, so at any rate um, let's see here the customers uh, who were all eager to be shoved and forced into doing things so as to lay the blame for failure on others he used to go to the old par partridge and tell him what some friend of a friend of an insider had advised them to do in a certain stock. They would tell him what they had not done with the tip, so he would tell them what they ought to do. But whether the tip they had was to buy or sell, the old chap's answer was always the same. The customer would finish the tale of his perplexity and then ask, what do you think I ought to do? Old Turkey would cock his head to one side, contemplate, uh, his fellow customer with a fatherly smile and finally he would say very impressively you know it's a bull market time and again I heard him say this well this is a bull market you know as though he were giving you a priceless talisman wrapped up in a million dollar accident insurance policy and of course I did not get this meaning I did not get his meaning one day, a fellow named Elmer Hardwood rushed into the office, wrote out an order, and gave it to the clerk. Then he rushed over to where Mr. Partridge was listening politely to John Fanny's story of the time he overheard Keen give an order to one of his brokers, and all that John made was a merely three points on 100 shares. And of course, the stock had gone up 24 points three days after uh, John sold out. It was at least the fourth time that John had told him that tale of woe. Uh, but old Turkey was smiling as sympathetically as if it was the first time he'd heard it. Well, Elmer made for the old man without a word, without a word of apology to Fa uh, John Fanning, told Turkey, Mr. Partridge, I have just sold my Climax Motors. My people say that the market is entitled to a reaction and that I'll be able to buy it back cheaper. So you better do likewise. That is, if you still have yours. Elmer looked suspiciously at the man to whom he had given the original tip to buy. The amateur or gratuitous tip, gratuitous, tipster always thinks he owns the receiver of his tip, body, and soul, even before he knows how the tip is going to turn out. Yes, Mr. Hardwood, I still have it, of course, said Turkey gratefully. It was nice of Elmer to think of the old chap. Well, now it's time to take your profits and get in again on the next dip, said Elmer. As if he had just made out the deposit slip for the old man, failing to perceive enthusiastic gratitude in the beneficiary's face, Elmer went on, I have just sold every share I owned. From his voice and manner, you would have conservatively estimated at 10,000 shares, but Mr. Partridge shook his head gratefully and went, no, no, I can't do that. What? yelled Elmer. I simply can't, said Mr. Partridge. He was in great trouble. Didn't I give you a tip to buy it? You did, Mr. Harwood, and I'm very grateful to you. Indeed, I am, sir, but hold on, let me talk. And didn't that stock go up seven points in 10 days, didn't it? It did, and I am much obligated to you, my dear boy, but I couldn't think of selling that stock. You couldn't, ask Elmer, beginning to, do, to look doubtfully himself. It is a habit with most tip givers to be tip takers. No, I couldn't, why not? And Elmer drew nearer. Why, this is a bull market the old fellow said, as if though he had given a long, detailed explanation. That's all right, said Elmer, looking angry because of his disappointment. I know there's a bull market as well as you do, but you better slip them that stock of yours and buy it back on the reaction. You might as well reduce the cost of yourself. My dear boy, said old Partridge, in great distress. My dear boy, if I sold the stock now, I'd lose my position. Okay, and then where would I be? Elmer Hardwood threw his hands up, shook his head, and walked over to me to get sympathy. Can you beat it, he asked me in a stage whisper, I ask you. I didn't say anything, so he went on. 
I give him a tip on Climax Motors. He buys 500 shares. He got seven points profits, and I advise him to get out and buy him back on a reaction. That's overdue even now. And what does he say? He says that if he sells, he'll lose his job. What do you know about that? I beg your pardon, Mr. Hardwood. I didn't say I'd lose my job. Cut in all turkey. I said I'd lose my position. Okay? Lose my position. And when you are as old as I am and you've been through as many booms and panics as I have, you'll know that to lose your position is something nobody can afford. Not even John D. Rockefeller. I hope the stock reacts and that you'll be able to repurchase your line at a substantial concession, sir. But myself, I can only trade in accordance with the experience of my many years. I paid a high price for it and I don't feel like throwing away a second tuition fee. But I am much obligated to you as if I had the money in the bank. It's a bull market, you know. And he strutted away, leaving Elmer dazed. But old Partridge said did not mean much to me until I began to think about my own numerous failures to make as much money as I ought to when I was so right on the general market. The more I studied, the more I realized how wise the old chap was. He had evidently suffered from the same defect in his young days and knew his own human weaknesses. He would not lay himself open to a temptation that experience has taught him, was hard to resist, and had always proved expensive to him as it was to me. I think it was a long step forward in my trading education when I realized at last that when Mr. Partridge kept on telling other customers, well, you know this is a bull market, he really meant to tell them that the big money was not in individual fluctuations, but in the main movements, not in reading the tape, but in sizing up the entire market and its trend. Best lesson in the history of trading, guys. That's it right there. The dollar is in a serious bear trend. Gold is in a serious bull trend. Don't sell your gold here. Don't sell your gold here. You have 61% Fibonacci retracement. The odds of this thing coming back down here, I guess, are still there. You have a big confluence here. The market's moved up pretty fast. We're finding support and resistance here at the 20-day moving average on the weekly chart. Okay? But, again, the dollar is on a very steep short-term, I mean, a long uh, bear market. If you look at the dollar against the Japanese yen, you know, yes, I'm looking at the a daily chart here. And if I look at this daily chart, you'll say to yourself, you know what, the U.S. versus the Japanese yen, this is a serious bull market. Guys, this is not a bull market. This is a bear market for the dollar. The dollar has been coming down here. And if I go to the monthly chart here, okay, again, this thing has been coming down since 1990, since actually since 1985, since 1983, this thing has been coming down. So this is just a short term uh, or a medium term um, upside move. This is still going to continue to come down. Yeah, it might test 109, uh, 110, might maybe test 123, possibly 135, maybe 146, but it does not matter. This is a serious bear market. Stick with the trends. Buy at the lows. Okay? This thing does not get any better. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look at this market. Stochastics on the monthly chart going up. Again, let me stick to the uh, weekly chart. But again, I just wanted to give you guys that lesson. Okay, this is a long-term investment. You have to buy at the lows. You bought here at 1500. Hey, you know what? There wasn't the low. We got tricked out of the market. Now you have a now you have a discount. Basically what this is is this is a discount. This is a huge divergence. This was supposed to continue with the Dow, but for whatever reason we had a huge divergence and divergence always correct themselves. You're starting to see right now that we are fairly back on a positive note here with the Dow Jones positive correlation. You had a move to the downside here, another move to the downside here on gold. This is the, stock, the, the Dow Jones, by the way. You had a move to the upside here. You had another move to the upside. Now the Dow Jones looks like it's correcting again, and uh, gold is actually continuing to go up a little bit higher. So we could find some support here for the Dow at 15.3, maybe continue to go higher to the to the $16,000 level. But the, the fact is, guys, is that while the Fed's balance sheets continue to increase, precious metals are going to continue 
to go up as well okay let me uh, show you guys this uh, quick clip here it's Santelli I like Santelli he's from CNBC uh, free market guy doesn't like the Fed too much and I love it when down, he down, does down. his little rants and the Fed gives them money and for the most part it's that money we want to pay attention to now this is a chart prepared by Wall Street examiner.com they are contributors to zero hedge which is a fairly popular website and it's a great chart but we're going to keep it really simple this blue line basically represents what we call the soma growth what's soma soma is where all the purchases of the federal reserve that's the portfolio that's the part of the balance sheet you can see them on so among other things they own a big driver of soma balances are the mortgages and the treasuries that are being purchased by the federal reserve so you can see the crisis right here in 2008 and you can see that the Fed's balance sheet was roughly about a half a trillion dollars. And, and I think that uh, it, is, it is important to pay attention to for the following reason. Here was basically your first QE in December of 2008. Here's the price of stock. So first QE, look at the stock market. Second QE begins around 2010, look at the stock market. Look what happens when they pause, by the way. The market goes flat. Look what happens to equities. QE2, equity markets. MBS reinvestments begin, you get another bump. QE3 settles, you go flat, boom. QE4, you go higher. I think it's pretty clear if you look at the blue line, especially after the credit crisis, and you look at the market, that the lines are fairly synonymous. So there you have it. I mean, again, if, as, um, as the Fed's balance sheets continues to, uh, to increase um, or to grow, uh, you're going to have higher precious metals prices, guys. Again, we did have a divergence here where for some reason this went down. I think it's all manipulation here. I mean, it doesn't really make sense that you print $85 billion and, and prices go down. Uh, it doesn't make sense at all. I mean, food prices, everything. And at the end of the day, again, remember, guys, um, this is still on a very much bull uh Actually, this is not the chart that I want. This is still very much on a bull market. Yeah, short term. Um, actually, I found another a chart here. Here. Let's put um, gold balance sheet. This is macro trends. I'll have the link for this one as well. So this is the same chart he was showing you. This is the Fed balance sheets in blue. And the gold line is obviously the price of gold. As you can see here, you saw a little bit of a divergence. The balance sheet was growing. Gold was going down. And of course, the divergence, uh, um, the, the correlation became positive again. And then you have a huge rise on the metals. Now, again, keep in mind, uh, this should be the same case here. You have a big divergence here. Divergence will always correct themselves. And again, I do expect much higher prices here on gold, surpassing two twenty-five hundred dollars $2,500 within the next two to three years. So very, 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 very excited. I got to tell you, I haven't been this excited about a market and uh, about this market actually uh, since probably uh, back here or maybe when this thing was, was, uh, was rallying. Um, again, it's just a beautiful opportunity to be in this stage here before this run up here. And I do believe that's what we're going to see. Uh, these are the stages very similar to this. Let's just say for whatever reason that you have another dip comes back down here to 1800. I mean, to 1100 big deal. You're still going to be roughly around here. Uh, and regardless, this, you know, we are still in a bull as mr partridge said we are in a bull market and do not lose your position um last month the word was that they're probably not going to taper in september and of course the media has to begin the hype again now they're saying that they might taper 30 billion instead of 25 of 20 billion the way they anticipated in september no economic news to suggest that they're going to taper as a matter of fact uh fed bullard just stated um as a matter of fact, Fed Bullard just recently said about two or three days ago that uh, if if uh, conditions don't improve, there will be no taper for next month. So I, I don't know what these guys are talking about. Of course, he's trying to stare up uh, this market. But if, again, guys, very, very, very excited about this period here. I'd like to see this metal come back down here. 
so we can continue to stack up. Again, this market, if you ask me, this is a great uh, a discount that we have. You have to use your dollars while they're strong, and this is what's happening. We have a, a, a current strong dollar. Currently, we have a strong dollar, and you want to take advantage of those strong dollars before gold comes up here, and then your dollars are weak. What are you going to do with weak dollars? Buy some gold, buy some tangible assets, buy some silver. This is where it is. So again, let's get to the analysis here. So weekly chart here, looking to test this 20-day moving average. That's where we're going to find resistance. Stochastics are still moving up. So again, as a right now, we are uh, going to, um, or at least we're looking to test this 1,350 uh, range possibly even higher maybe test the 1380 range uh, but really a confluence I mean just a lot of, of resistance up here you have the 20 day moving average here on the daily I'm sorry on the weekly chart uh, if you can notice here we haven't not we have not been above this 20 day moving average since December of 2012. Um, but again, all bad things must come to an end, and uh, I, I definitely feel that uh, pretty soon here, especially when they announce, uh, especially when they announce that they're not going to taper next month, I do expect a, a good rally, and I would expect uh, for at least 1450, possibly even 1500 before the year's up, and obviously continuing to go higher um, as the Feds continue to print and print and print. Okay, so um, again, guys do not lose a focus okay great opportunity to buy i urge you to call your representative and add to your positions because at these levels you do not want to uh trust me you're gonna have a lot of fun here when this thing starts doing this again here and there is absolutely no sign that it won't do this again especially with those huge divergences with the stock jones with the dow jones and and with the uh with the uh money printing right uh let's look at silver here so silver i got some very cool lines i did this yesterday actually i hadn't done uh, i was trying to see realistically speaking how far down does this thing has to go before you can actually say that this is no longer in a bull market i would say that in order for this thing to stop being a bull market you would probably have to fall below eight dollars I, I i really don't see that happening but uh, um, but again, I'm just saying. I just did this line for the for the heck of it. You know, you're looking at these long-term moves. Really, it would have to come down substantially before before you can say that this is not an April market. If we look at the Fib levels here again, we're looking to test this 61% uh, Fibonacci retracement. Currently running into some resistance here at the 20-day moving average. Again, I do expect silver to come down here, and I'll show you why. Um, uh, a little bit again should you take some profits over here uh, I think I'd rather take my profits over here or over here or you know maybe over here um, but at this point it, it, there's really no reason for you to take any profits even if you purchased here if you bought here it doesn't you know you still have a long way to go so why take a couple uh, a couple cents when you can have uh, 10 or 15 20 30 dollar profits here um, but again, this is what I came up with here. So we can always trace these lines. These lines will always um, show you some resistance and some supports. And if you notice here, I'm drawing where the market found support and where the market has had resistance, right? All right, so uh, we can probably continue to continue to do that so we are running into some resistance we found if you notice these this one line that I drew here got you some support here support here then this line was resistance here uh, came down uh, became support and so on it was supported here false breakout any false breakout you have a huge move to the upside always or uh, false breakdowns uh, you have a, 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 an immediate fast move up to the upside uh, and vice versa so over here for example you had a uh, a fake uh, move to the upside of course because it was fake you had a big move to the downside um, and again my point is we found resistance here at this line I am expecting this level here to hold okay just like it did I would um, I guess I would dare to say that this was probably a fake 
uh, um, and I guess only time will tell if this was really fake. If this was a false breakdown, then you're going to see a big move to the upside, probably test this range here between $23 and uh, $24. Um, but again, I, I would expect this level to hold here, 1930. Really, if I'm looking at this chart, I'm expecting this level to hold next time around. So from 2880, let's say we go up a little bit higher, I would expect this thing to come back down. Now, I do expect it to come back down from, I wouldn't say from here, but um, again, confluence of resistance. You have this line here. You have the two, the 100-day moving average on the daily chart. Remember, we're just running into the 20-day moving average, so really a uh, wall of resistance. Um, and this is an, a quick, a small issue that I see here. See this gap here? See that gap? This is a price gap, and gaps are usually filled. So when you have prices, I'll give you an example of a gap. Um, I think I was uh, doing this not too long ago. Yes, you see this gap here? When prices, remember, this is where the market opened, this is where the market closed. If it's green, the market opened here, and the market closed here. Anytime you see these little wicks, we call them wicks, right? Like this, let's say this wick. Basically, the market closed here, it opened here. The market came all the way down at uh, 1201, and this is the Australian and uh, versus the New Zealand dollar. Uh, come down from 1201 all the way up to 1241 and you see this long wick that just tells you that the price went down and it came back up but it ended up closing here at 1242 so you see this gap here there's no candles here usually gaps get filled not a hundred percent of the times but a very 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 big percentage of the times, the gaps are filled so again if you saw this gap you could have shorted this market here covered your gap once you covered the gap then you can probably sell off but this market continued to go down anyway my point is that um we are we currently have a little bit of a gap it's not a huge gap but it is nonetheless a gap and um i would expect that no matter where this market goes from here uh, i could go to 24 for all we know uh, but i would expect this gap to f to be filled um, within the next couple of weeks or the next couple of days. But again, still a lot of strength, still a lot of momentum here. Uh, currently trading at 21.85. Let's look at the daily chart here. Daily charts looking, uh, the stochastics are looking a bit overbought. Um, so again, that with the 20 day moving average on the weekly with this line here and with this 100 day moving average, I wouldn't expect silver to go too much further than let's say 22 or 23. Uh, but then again, gold and silver, do tend to make these huge moves to the upside here upside here and you know usually th this is exactly why you cannot sell your position this is why you have to understand this market understand that um, money printing is inflation it's not prices going up and uh, inflation I'm sorry higher prices is really a symptom of high of, of of money printing or inflation so when you're printing the amount of money that we're printing uh, with no signs of stopping anytime soon the last thing you'd want to do is lose your position sell this thing and next thing you know this thing takes off without you all right so that's your silver chart here and that's about it guys so again running into some resistance here 21 uh 22 22 20 somewhere on there again a bit over overboard so we could see a dip back down to the 20 cover that gap and i would imagine that's the buying opportunity there and hopefully we can continue to go much 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 higher is the bottom uh has the bottom been set yet we don't know only time will tell at this point but we do know this that we are printing 85 billion and the market is poised for a huge move. Very, very excited, and I hope uh, I hope uh, we all are as excited as I am. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.